Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to On the Mic of Mike. Mike King here. This is part of Mike King Red Biz Radio Network, ESPN Richmond, The Choice 105.3, The Choice uh, 105.3, ESPN 106.1, as well as International Business Good Radio. We talked to the game changers out there. Hey, we left the light on and a friend of the family came back, writer, music historian, uh, just uh, a man who is like the most interesting man in the world. Joe McSpadden is back with us. Welcome back, <laughs> sir. Mike, thank you. It's... You're a writer too. Yes. Which one do you hang your hat on? I'm 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 probably a writer first. You're you're a writer. First. I'm a writer first. Uh, I, I'm a contributing editor to Okra, so I also help edit the uh, text for Okra magazine. Um, and I've been with them since uh, 2018. So and and let the listeners know, Okra Magazine. It's it's a Virginia-based publication now. Well, it, it is now. Our technically our corporate office address is still Mississippi, but my publisher moved up to Lynchburg, okay. uh, and he's been there for a couple of years now. And um, so basically, the magazine, I guess you could say, was based out of here. My editor in chief's in Alabama, and I'm right here in the Richmond area. So explain to the listeners what Okra Magazine is. Okra Magazine is an absolutely drop dead gorgeous it is quarterly. It yes, is. It is. It, look, if you've ever seen Garden and Gun, we look better. And it, that's because of my editor in chief. The magazine looks great because of Jeannie. I have nothing to do with how good it looks. She makes it look delicious, right? And you got some, some great writings, the articles as, as well. There's been some really interesting pieces. Um, you know, I mean, I'm just one of the writers in, in that regard. I'm not the sole writer, of course. Uh, and there's been some great stuff that we've had in the magazine. We've got uh, a good piece coming up here that I, uh, I've i got on a local talent, which we'll get into in a little bit. But uh, things like the Delta Hill Riders, African-American cowboys in the Deep South, going to rodeos, riding and all of that. Those are just some of the stories that we carry. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, Joe McSpadden, he is uh, my encyclopedia for, it's not just African American, it's music, as you call it, it's roots music, is that what you call it? Root, roots music would roots really music. be a little bit word. of everything here. Yeah. You school me on things I'd never heard about. Being from Philadelphia, I've seen people riding horses there in the middle of the city. That's one thing. But every time you come, you come with dropping some knowledge on us about the music scene from a historical standpoint. I was always interested in history. In fact, that was originally um, my going to be my major in college. And um, but I've always my one of my big loves has always been music. And I've always listened to it. I've always been drawn towards historical sounds, um, acoustic music, um, the acoustic blues, acoustic folk. Um, roots music like that, Celtic music. And there's a lot of uh, interesting cross-pollination in this kind of music. A lot of this music um, comes from Scottish, English, and Irish background, but it gets mixed with other music that has a background in uh, the African-American songbook. So you get uh, a really neat um, sense that everybody's all in in the American songbook you can't you can't take one out you know so one of the things you told me about that was funny that you would have the, the African-American groups would go to the different camps and they would have to learn songs in the other languages yes and I <laughs> I wish if, if I'd thought of it I'd have tried to look that particular group up there's some old grainy black and white footage of a trio of African-American performers, but they would play the logging camps in West Virginia. And they would, you know, you'd have guys there from Eastern Europe. You'd have guys from Western Europe. You might have some British people there, um, some Polish people. And so they would have to learn the language or if not fully understand the language, they'd had to know how to sing those songs in the language that they were written in. And that's how they got paid was being able to, you know, play that music that the people wanted to hear. True Americana. Yes, absolutely. Uh, and I'll, I'll give you another example. Um, probably in the fall, it's not confirmed yet, but Kerry Morin may be here. I met with him in Carytown uh, a few years back when he was here as a part of the Pocahontas Film Festival. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Who is that person? Kerry Morin is a... 
uh, he gets kind of labeled as blues, but he is an acoustic guitar picker of absolute uh, amazing skill. He's also a member of the Crow Nation. So he's a Native American blues man. So, you know, when I when I was writing about him, I kept just thinking of the term Native Americana because he brings the Native American perspective to the stuff that he writes. Ladies and gentlemen, Joe McSpadden is out there, writer, writer extraordinaire, but a historian as well. How can people find you out there? So you can go to okramagazine.com. And if you go on our website, you can subscribe. I will say, with the magazine being a quarterly, it's easier to get it if you subscribe. You also get the digital version when you do that. But with a quarterly, to find it in the bookstore, you just have to kind of know when it's there. Okay. Where a, whereas a monthly is there every month, right? Mm -hmm. So what you want to do is, is subscribe to it. But you can look at some of the photography there, which is absolutely gorgeous. On the Our People tab on the menu button, you can read a bunch of the um, different articles there. Um, and there's a lot of our articles from past issues on that website. There you go, Joe Binks Spadden. All righty, so you also have your hand in the Richmond music scene. Yes. Which um, is driving to we hear about, and I always ask people, what do, why do you think that the Richmond uh scene the artistic scene is is so hot right now you know i don't know that i can find you know like a, a quick answer for that i think it's just that you've got a great creative community here i think having um vcu here helps that because they've got their art center i think um there's a good uh at least used to be the i think you're still together is the river city blues society there's groups that are here uh, there are people who came from this area. Apparently, uh, Pat Benatar, I don't know if you remember her. Yes, sir. She I mean, used to sing commercial jingles here in Richmond. Really? They were recorded at another studio in town. The name of it escapes me at the moment. Um, a big chunk of Bruce Springsteen's E Street Band was from here. Uh, and Carlos Chafin owns In Your Ear Studios. Was he, that one? And yeah, he used to own that with Robin Thompson, who had a number of records out, who's since passed away. Um, but there's 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 some good roots in in Richmond, and I think it's just I think it's just bearing fruit right here. All right, so shout out to Carlos and In Your Ear. So that kind of ties us into the whole thing that's happening. Oh, so we got to give a shout out to our man, uh, Craig Martin. Hey, Craig. Craig Martin is up there. It's how we came together. All right, let's talk about what you came, some of the stuff you got going on now. So uh, there's a brand new re uh, record label here in town called Shaco Records. And it was kind of the brainchild of, of, of Carlos Chafin. Uh, the three, I would say, key people involved in this are um, Carlos Chafin, Craig Martin, and Q Martin. No relation. No, no, but they're... There's some good three characters. Yeah, they're all they, very interesting they are people. Some, they, they are some characters. And their own stories are very interesting. You yes, know? they are. Q, I don't know as much about his story. I know he owns uh, Carter Magazine. He does have Carter. And that's when they do the DNA. And so his posts are out there every day. A big background in, in the music, in the film industry. But he understands that. And then you put them together with Craig Martin. Yep, who's got the 25 year. Well, for 25 years, he was the communication uh, director for the Southern Baptist Church. He was going into war zones. Uh, he was going into areas that were um, flood zones where there were natural disasters. He was recording the works of missionaries who were feeding people. Um, so he's he's been sort of a globetrotter for a long time. And he got involved with uh, a friend of his from the International School of uh, Bangkok, a, a guy by the name of Earl... Um, Bridges, and he's uh, in Char uh, Charleston, and they started a TV show called The Good Road, which has been nominated so far for uh, the first two seasons, a total of three Emmys, and season three, uh, I, I don't think a word's come out yet whether or not they've got any nominations for that, but it's a beautiful show. It is an excellent show, and they, they give you insight into all different types of people in different locations. They really bring they really bring the people in. So that's the Good Road TV. Craig Martin, Earl Bridges is there. 
Now, it's Craig Martin, Q Martin, and Carlos all together come with it's, it's Shaco Records. Shaco Records. So um, I got to meet Carlos a few years ago. I did a piece on him for Style Weekly. He um, was hosting these sort of mixers where he would invite some people from politics, the tech world, some business folks, really? and some creatives. This is, we're talking probably five years ago. And they would have some appetizers and a, a local brewery would provide some beer and wine. And it was a way to bring people together. There'd be a time to mix for a little bit. And then we'd take a break. There'd be maybe a 40, 45 minute concert in the studio and then come back out and mix again. So it was a way to kind of bring different parts of Richmond together. And I thought it was genius. And, and, and of course, music cool. does that. Yeah, that, that is cool. That's really, that's really cool. Yeah. That's so creators come up with something like that. Yeah. A creative person. Well, and he is a, a multi-instrumentalist. He does a lot of the music that you hear on the Good Road TV show. So when you see them walking through the forest and you hear that little background music, Carlos is doing that stuff. The guy's a, a genius and you know, he's a wizard. There you go. Uh, Jimmy Spadden here with us on the mic with Mike. Hello. He's here with us. Come on in. So he is here talking, talking music. So, hey, we just had Danielle Pritchu stepped into the studio. All right, come on in. Come on in. And so uh, Joey Spadden is here with us, ladies and gentlemen, talking music. And so, like I said, for the last time, we had, you dropped some things on us. Uh, but like I said, I have to bring you in to school me on Black historical music because when now I grew up with the R and B and gospel. You're bringing me stuff that I, I've never heard before. Well, it's you know, I think that's partly the fault of radio. Mm -hmm. um, you know, radio plays Big what songs. sells, and and yeah, and and exactly, and they play the same things over and over again because it's all about you know keeping people's ear there. So you know, when you have something like WNRN out of Charlottesville that plays unusual stuff. They'll go from a soul song to an indie rock song to a bluegrass song like that. And you'll be listening to a banjo picking and a guy singing about, you know, losing money in a in a card game. And then all of a sudden you've got this crazy sounding, uh, you know, a lot of, lot of beats and things going on. So they really mix it up. And you know, when you when you're riding around in your car and you're listening to those guys, you're going to hear like radio used to be. You, you know, I, it was called I always thought it was funny. It was called broadcasting. You remember back in the day you could hear Neil Young, then you'd hear Jimi Hendrix, then you'd hear Sly and the Family Stone and the Isley Brothers. And then you'd hear some bubblegum pop thing. It was all mixed all together. The same they didn't. They didn't do they didn't format it out and say, OK, we're going to play classic rock where you're going to hear the same 10 songs by the same 10 bands and it was all mixed together. So you got exposed to stuff and you've got to find those stations that, that do that now. There you go. Jumping Spadden, writer, extraordinary music. All right. So you brought some music with you. I did. Uh, let's, uh, who'd you bring with you? This is a local guy and I'll tell you about this. Okay. So uh, I had a great interview with Rodney. It's going to be in the next issue of Okra magazine, which should hit the racks at Barnes and Noble and books a million around the 11th of February. Okay. Uh, we also have a feature story in there on the Good Road as well. And the feature story is focused on the James River. So we got that. Got I've got those two articles in there. But I met Rodney, one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet. Um, this guy put on a show at the Hippodrome in I December. I that was amazing. Absolutely amazing. I had heard him uh, solo at the Richmond International Film Festival, one of the one of the after parties. And I thought, man, this guy's good, right? But he's up there with an 11 piece band. And I'm telling you what, it was classic soul. He's got the moves, he's got the dance steps, he's got the presence. And he took that stage, he grabbed that mic, and he owned the audience. Al Green was there and he said it was it was outstanding. It was amazing. At one point uh, in the show, he does a couple of gospel numbers, right? And people are getting up and they're shouting, they're dancing, they're jumping around. And I'm looking over at this guy in a wheelchair and I thought, if he gets up and walks, I'm passing out. <laughs> it's like, it's like, okay, it, it's going to, who else you brought with you? Uh, I brought uh, a fellow we've talked about before, Eric Bibb. But I want to tell you first about, uh, a little bit more about Rodney. Okay. 
So he's got this EP out. It's got about five songs, five, six songs on it. Um, when you listen to this, what's really cool is he writes his own tunes. And it sounds like you're in 1970. It, you feel like when you listen to this, I've heard this before. And in the set, when he's doing this and he combines in something from Marvin Gaye or Al Green, his songs sit right up there with him. And there's no change in the like, oh, yeah, that that was a Rodney tune. Now, this is this, it, it all sounds like it belongs together. There you go, Joe McSpadden. Ladies and gentlemen, Shaco Records. How can people get more info about them? So you can go to shacorecords.com. You could go to Rodney Stith's website. He's also on Facebook. He's got a concert coming up in Petersburg with the Soul Foundation, that 11-piece band, at the um, Petersburg Library. It's for Black History Month. And it's the 17th of February. Ooh. Yeah, so... Um, you can get tickets online. He just posted something about it this morning on Facebook. Uh, but that's going to be a great show. There's some other performers there, but he looks to be the headliner from what I can see. Down from in the... Petersburg, 117. Yep. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Joe Bing Spad. Joey, like to thanks for coming. It is great as always. It's good to see you again. It is man. good to see you. So we're we're coming to you from Classic Rock just for you, sir. Well, thank you very much. I like I love all the posters in here. I know you were, you were I'm, right at home. I'm I'm checking that out and all the all the records over here that are not for sale. And I'm going, man, this is some good stuff. There you go. That's what happens when you come and hang out on the mic with Mike. But it's yeah. nice to see. I mean, your I mean, your show's moving up. I mean, you, you're on the second floor now. I know. As long <laughs> as I stay off the third floor, because that's we pay the bill. On the mic, Mike, Mike King, Joe McSpadden. We got to run. Take care now.